Привет, Дима. Привет. Привет. Работает? Да, да, все работает. У нас постоянная ссылка на семинар. Угу. Я думаю, ты видел. Я ты вроде был у меня в ссылке в списке на рассылку. Нет, обычно не, не получаю. Ну хорошо. Проверю, что вы получал. Джинху, is this you? Значит, Дима, тут у нас в основном тут бывают иногда китайские участники. Uh -huh. Для них лучше, конечно, говорить по-английски. Вот. Ну, надо решить, они есть или нет, и тогда выберем язык. А вот есть Джинху, но, правда, он не отвечает, потому что он отошел куда-то. Давай подождем немножко. Я Сейчас. на доске могу писать нормально, да? И ты проверил, как там делишь на доску. Ну, да, вот... вполне. Вполне. Ага. Так, сейчас надо подождать, пока кто-то еще появится. У нас просто не сразу все приходят. Народ не торопится. А, полтора часа, да? Да, стандартно полтора часа. Можно учить вот и больше. Так сказать, это всегда это. Ага. Так всегда. Ну, у тебя все по плану, да? Ты в четверг выезжаешь. Да. Я буду в Москве. Часа должен прилететь уже по московски. Вот. Надеюсь. Как говорится, если буду жив. Потому что сейчас уже уверенно быть нельзя не в чем, судя по всему. Так, сейчас я Саше напишу, чтобы он тоже появлялся. Сейчас. Так. А куда еще появился? Зоран, uh, is Зоран. Ты им никому не давал? ссылки на семинар. Нет, нет, не давал. А, Зоран, это ты? Да, потому что я вижу, это очень близко к твоему имени. Но не Зоран Скода, но Зоки Скода. Я вижу, окей, Странно. Um, we shall wait for another couple of minutes because our participants often often come a bit late. But then we can continue. Okay. Please turn off the microphone. What? Please turn off turn off your microphone. We can hear your uh, your, your moving through some uh, some noise. Uh -huh. Так, ну что, придется тебе говорить по-английски, Дима. Да, без проблем. Это ты едешь или? Нет, 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 я слушаю. Статичен. Это узор у нас вот это включилось, ладно. Окей. Что, у нас 34 уже минуты. Ну, давай начнем потихонечку. 
Да, да. So it is uh, my pleasure to introduce today's speaker. It's my colleague from the university and from the Institute of Theoretical Physics and my well, fellow student and um, yeah, Dima Tovalayev. And uh, he is going to talk about the tetrahedron equation and generalization of young Baxter equation, which has lots of application applications in physics and mathematics. And um, yeah, I think we shall see what interesting, what other interesting things there are. Okay. Uh, Gosh, thank you very much. Uh, it's a great pleasure uh, to speak with, with you and with your colleagues. Uh, and to speak on one of my famous subject of scientific interest interests uh, about the knowledge of tetrahedron equation <clears throat> um, uh, so uh, to my opinion it's a very general structure uh, but uh, uh, it is always the fact that it is difficult to formulate uh, what is this generality. <clears throat> um, uh, but um, um, what is uh, what is in, in, uh, obvious manifestation of this uh, generality is the fact that this structure appears in very different uh, mathematical and physical uh, subjects. Uh, and I will start with uh, uh, with the recording of the Jan Baxter equation. Uh, so the Jan Baxter equation, uh, Baxter equation, equation. <clears throat> uh, it can be written in the set theoretical or uh, in uh, tensor uh, version, uh, but its form is always the same. So it's some um, cubic equation up, uh, I'm sorry, uh, R12, R13, R23 equals R23, R13, R12. Uh, there, for example, uh, uh, we will stay on the set theoretical, set theoretical version. R is just a map, uh, is a map, map uh, from X, uh, from the Cartesian second uh, second power of x to to the same set, so it's some <clears throat> some operation, some binary operation, but uh, an operation with two values. So uh, in a modern categorical point of view or operatic operatic point of view, it's an operation of binarity to two. Biarity operation. Uh, <clears throat> and an equation is written in the uh, Cartesian third power of the set X. So both sides of this equality are maps from maps uh, from X uh, power three to the same. Uh, third power of uh, third Cartesian power of x, and the indices uh, means uh, that uh, the corresponding multiplier acts on uh, the corresponding uh, Cartesian uh, component of this uh, of this Cartesian power. So, for example, R one two applied to three arguments that it's just it is just r applied to x y uh, which is uh, uh, which uh, produces two element of the set x uh, and it does not change uh, ch change the third component uh, r two three X, Y, Z is just X, R, Y, Z. 
Uh, okay. Uh, there is another structure equation which is called the braid relation braid relation relation uh, uh, it takes the following form s12 s23 s12 equals s23 s12 s23 uh, uh, here s uh, is an object of the same uh, set of, of the set of uh, uh, maps from x uh, 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 the, the square of x to square of x and both sides of the braid relations uh, of the braid relation are maps from x uh, power 3 to x power 3 uh, the the uh, significant uh, the, the the sense of these uh, indices is this is the same but you see that the indices are different <clears throat> and there is a uh, closer relation between the solutions for the Young-Baxter um, equation and the braid relation uh, and it is the following uh, simple theorem that s solves braid relation if and only if uh, p s solves uh, young baxter equation where p is a transposition uh, there's a map from map x square to x square uh, which acts like the transposition so p applied to x y is y x uh, and uh, this relation uh, this relation show, shows why uh, the n boxster is so important uh, the braid relation is the is the relation in the braid group uh, uh, so a solution for the braid relation uh, uh in a sense is the representation of the braid group and the representation representations for the braid group played uh, a crucial role in the theory of invariance of not invariance uh, so all the uh, all the uh, uh, field of quantum not invariance uh, in place with special representation of the braid group uh, it means that with solutions uh, for the braid relation of the, or for the young baxter equation so just, just, sorry isn't it true that isn't it true that every every solution every representation of a braid group comes from some young baxter or not uh, so uh, um, uh, there is some uh, yeah, yeah. specialization i i i, I could yeah, say yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah sorry just just it was kind of my uh, my yeah so yeah. the uh, oh, oh, the only yeah. the only yeah. we actually not, need not assume in, when we work with break groups need not assume that all flips actually are represented by the same operator and here is that's precisely what we do okay sorry i just yes but uh, uh, for, for, uh, for my opinion it's, it is very it is very important here that uh, <clears throat> that the uh, uh, representations of generators acts in uh, uh, so they are localized if you want so they act on some uh, uh, on some particular uh, multiplier in the tensor product or in the uh, Cartesian product. So uh, it is also important when we say that uh, solution of the Ian Baxter equation correspond to representation of the braid group. Uh, so it's it's a particular class of representations, but it plays an important role in construction of uh, not not invariance. Um, okay, so 
uh, here the important uh, meaning of this uh, of these types of equation equations the relation with the relations uh, with uh, the with knot theory and the theory of quantum invariance quantum invariance of knots but it is not only uh, it is not the only uh, importance of this equation uh, <clears throat> the yen baxter equation plays uh, an important role in the theory of hopf algebras and uh, philosophically it can be uh, argued uh, it can be thought as a good way to uh, to deform some commutative stru structures but more precisely it's a good way to deform the co-commutative co-multiplication in bi-algebras so uh, that is how they appeared in uh, in the theory of hop algebras precisely in the theory of quasi-triangular hop algebras but uh, it is a different story i'd like to uh, do not go into the details in this subject but uh, principally and philosophically the yen baxter equation it is a way to deform the the commutativity and the commutativity so uh, in a sense it, it is exactly the, the the way of thinking about the braid group so it's another way to to make transpositions and uh, it can appear in very different uh, contexts in mathematics, uh, for example, in deforming algebraic operations or uh, actions of some some structures. Uh, there is a very interesting uh, interesting field of braided uh, of braided linear spaces of braided uh, fields or uh, fields of uh, functions, uh, whatever. So. Uh, it's a way to deform the commutativity relation, uh, commutativity property. Uh, and uh, I, uh, I, I speak about this because um, uh, I'd like to understand better uh, the geometric and algebraic uh, sense uh, meaning of uh, the high generalization of the n simplex equation and uh, uh, in particular the Zmalochikov tetrahedron equation. Uh, so, first of all, I uh, like to propose uh, to you a, a geometric or uh, topological interpretation for the uh, for the Yen Baxter equation. Uh, it corresponds to the uh, further de Meister, uh, Ray de Meister. Uh, Mr. Move uh, in uh, the theory of uh, of uh, of knots. Uh, so let us let us represent uh, this move in such a way uh, with oriented. Uh, oh, sorry, ah, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, it's the first, second, third, or second, third. And we can uh, we can associate to each line uh, a copy of the set X. And to the crossing uh, of lines, a map in a square of uh, <clears throat> in the square uh, uh, the automorphism of the square of uh, the set x and the right diagram correspond to the following uh, to the following composition of maps r to three uh, which means that we started uh, with the with, with this point uh, then we apply r one three because at this point we have uh, the first and the third lines and we finish by the third uh, point uh, which is indexed by uh, numbers one two 
uh, and this product should be the same as mm, on the left picture, which is R12, because we start with at the point, uh, at the black point, at the blue point, solid blue point. Uh, then we apply uh, a map to the first and third uh, multipliers, and we finish by R23. So the equivalence of such uh, procedures of applications of some maps to uh, copies of uh, this attacks attached to uh, the lines of this diagram uh, is the same as the Yen-Baxter equation. Uh, uh, and I'm ready to define the zemalochik tetrahedron equation. equation. Uh, <clears throat> so it exists also in the theoretical and in, uh, in tensor in vector form, uh, and it plays uh, it takes the following form. Uh, phi, 1, 2, 3, 1, 4, 5, uh, 2, 4, 6, 3, 5, 6 equals the product in the inverse order. Uh, the best way to uh, visualize this uh, product is to uh, to consider a tetrahedron and uh, an inverse tetrahedron. Um, let us uh, enumerate, enumerate the lines, five, six, and to give them an orientation. Uh, on the right, we have, uh, uh, we have... Uh, uh, Dima, sorry. Uh... Mm, uh, the way you enumerate these lines is an arbitrary way, or you just I think that it is arbitrary. But uh, I'd like to take this particular way to uh, to enumerate them uh, to make the notation coherent. Okay. So uh, uh, these are the same lines. So it is the line two. It is the line five, uh, four. Uh, six, three, and one. But uh, we have to we have to apply here all our geometric intuition. So it's a tetrahedron, which is applied by inverting it uh, through the central. Symmetry with respect yeah. to the center of this tetrahedron. You can actually just imagine that you push the, uh, the, the the bottom of the left tetrahedral. Yes, yes, the, yes. The top it is vertex, mm -hmm. and that will, that's precisely the, the picture that you obtain on the right. Then, uh -huh. and that actually to keep these things coherent, they just look at the bottom of this picture. And there you should see the same three uh, lines converging with the numbers one, two, and three, and they're precisely in the same order as they're, you, they're here, right? And uh, that's 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 one thing. And then you also look at the triangle on the top, and this triangle can, is, is composed of the lines four, five, and six. And now if you push them down and you obtain precisely the same triangle on the bottom, composed of the same three lines four five and six and that's how you actually keep the trace keep the track of 
of the of the of the yeah of the indices. Uh, yes, yes, uh, yes. Uh, Gosh, thank you very much. Uh, it's a good comment. So we have to push this uh, this point through, uh, or the plane. This plane, we have to push through this point, and to make it uh, <clears throat> go out. Uh, that, that's right. So, and then we apply the same technique. We apply maps or uh, or linear operators uh, to the uh, to the corresponding copies of the set X <clears throat> uh, uh, attached to to the lines of this picture. Uh, so, on the right, we can apply uh, an operator uh, phi. Three five six and uh, three five three five six, and it is the same as the first uh, operator on the on the left side. <clears throat> After this, uh, we can apply uh, an operator two four six. this one after this <clears throat> it is one uh one four five here and the last one is one two three and it should be the same as uh as uh, a composition of maps or linear operators on the left uh, of this picture so we start by an operator one two three which is the first element on the right hand side of the equation after this we apply one four five is the second one etc so uh, this picture illustrate uh, illustrate uh, <clears throat> the numbering of this equation and uh, uh, it is not accidental. Um, so this uh, this equation uh, can be applied to the theory of uh, invariance of two nodes uh, because of the existence of one because uh, one of the uh, Rosman moves uh, playing the uh, role analogous to the red Meister move in one node in the theory of two nodes is exactly the uh such uh, such topological move so uh, move which uh, resolve the <clears throat> uh, uh, singular points of intersection of uh, four two planes in two ways so uh, on both sides we have two uh, two resolutions of uh, of the singular of the singular point uh, okay So mm, there is a very natural class of solutions for the uh, for the Zmolochik of tetrahedron equations. Examples. Uh, and the first one, an electric solution. It is given by a rational map, so it acts on uh, on uh, uh, on points, but uh, uh, we can think that it acts on uh, rational function on free variables. Uh, I'd like to write it down in coordinates. So it acts on uh, free point, uh, free 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 uh, coordinates of points, uh, and give it gives the following uh, functions. Uh, x plus z plus x y z x y divided by x plus z plus x y z and here <clears throat> we have y z divided by x plus z 
plus x, y, z. Uh, so this this is a, a linear map on uh, on uh, functions on rational functions on free variables defined by these formulas and and uh, this map solves the tetrahedron uh, tetrahedron equation uh, another way another another solution uh, lustic lustic solution uh, it is a sum limit of an electric solution fl uh, which is also a rational uh, map on three variables. Uh, and it is given by the same formulas, but without cubic terms. So it is x, y divided by x plus z, x plus z, y, z divided by x plus z. <clears throat> and this solution has a very interesting algebraic interpretation and in fact was uh, uh, in fact appeared in, uh, in 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 this context in the context of uh, totally positive matrices so uh, it is given by the following by the following transformation let us consider the unipotent uh, group of degree free so it is a group uh group of uh real uh upper triangular upper triangular matrices uh with uh, with uh unities on the diagonal diagonal uh, such a matrix so such a matrix uh, uh, has the form abc uh, can be represented in the following form u1 of x u2 of y u1 of z and uh, there is another form Two of z prime u1 y prime u2 x prime uh, where there uh, uh, u1 uh, and u2 are uh, uh, elements of the uh, one parameter subgroups in this uh, unipotent group uh, which is given by the following. So U1 is a matrix like this, and U2 is a matrix corresponding to the second uh, root of the root system A2. Uh, so uh, each uh, uh, almost uh, almost each matrix of such form uh, of, of this unipotent sub, uh, of unipotent group uh, can be uh, represented in this uh, factorized form and uh, in both uh, uh, in in two ways uh, the way the relations of uh, such uh, coordinates so x prime y prime z prime is exactly the uh, lustic map <clears throat> uh, and this transformation um, can be thought of uh, 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 as a cluster transformation so it's a, it's a change from one cluster uh, to another in some positroid and some positive uh, cluster variety. Uh, Sorry for interrupting. Yeah. Just one that uh, lustic uh, solution looks pretty much like the uh, the eclectic solution. The yes. difference is well, very 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 little. 
is there a more close relation? Maybe you can show that, say, electric solution or acoustic solution is deformation of, uh, one is deformation of another or not. Uh, so it, it is an obvious uh, statement. So one is an, uh, was one is uh, uh, the electric solution is a, is a limit of the electric one. Uh, uh, more substantial explanation for this fact. Um, uh, for me, they are uh, archetypes of such solutions. Um, Lustig solution is related to the unipotent, to the Borel subgroup, and the uh, electrical solution is related to the symplectic group. Uh, both uh, has cluster structures, uh, cluster positive uh, cells, uh, and uh, these relations are positive in the, uh, in, the, in an appropriate sense uh, relating to two such groups. Why Barry subgroup is the limit of the symplectic group? Uh, I couldn't say uh, just now, but uh, it should be natural. Okay, I see. But, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, so, but uh, uh, the most important thing in this uh, in this slide, maybe, uh, it is the statement that uh, uh, the tetrahedron equation is related uh, to problems of three factorization. Then some object, some algebraic object, some <clears throat> I don't know whatever, uh, can be uh, decomposed in the product of three components. And in this uh, uh, in this case, it is a little bit different, difficult to find a good algebraic structure like uh, algebra, like commutative algebra, or, uh, uh, something something else, uh, which could be deformed by this uh, by solution for the uh, for this logic of the tetrahedron equation, but. Uh, Mm, from uh, from uh, from the topological point of view, uh, the of uh, the solution of the Zmalochikov equation is naturally related to uh, to the two braided categories, uh, but uh, it is also uh, a, a, a good. Uh, subject to talk uh, precise, uh, completely and especially about this. Uh, so I, I will go further. Uh, another, uh, another situation of free factorization uh, is the orthogonal group SO3. Uh, and the very known uh, definition for the Euler, Euler angles. So each element uh, A from S, S of three or almost each element uh, can be uh, uh, represented as a product of uh, three rotations. Uh, I'd like to write uh, R12 with the angle alpha. R two three with the angle beta uh, and R one two with the angle gamma, and as in the elliptic case, <clears throat> uh, this uh, uh, can be done <clears throat> in an opposite order. R two three gamma prime, R one two beta prime, and R two three alpha prime. Uh, and there is a map. I'd like to write it as so uh, phi SO3, uh, which produces uh, primes, uh, primed angles from the uh, from the pure angles. And this map, <clears throat> which is now a trigonometric uh, function of three variables. Uh, uh, produces also a solution for the Zmalochik uh, of tetrahedron equation. So uh, such three uh, groups, uh, I mean the the, uh, the unipotent group, the symplectic group, 
and the orthogonal group uh, possesses uh, uh, solutions for the possesses the three decomposition problems and the solution for the tetrahedron equation. And they are archetypical uh, from many points of view. So they correspond to different classes of cluster varieties. They correspond to uh, exactly solvable models of statistical mechanics. Uh, the orthogonal group correspond to the Eisen model. The symplectic group correspond to the uh, problems of electrical networks. Uh, and the unipotent group no, it doesn't correspond to some to some uh, uh, to some famous exactly solvable model of statistical mechanics. But um, there is some parallelism in uh, combinatorics and uh, structure of cluster varieties corresponding to the solution of the uh, Zmalochikov equation. Uh, now I'd like to uh, to uh, and to give uh, pretty more general um, definition of such equations, uh, which is uh, uh, which is called the uh, n-simplex equation. Equation, uh, and it is given by um, some analysis in in combinatoric of hi hypercube. So I n combinatorics mm, it is also related to higher Brewer order. But I will uh, uh, I will Sound weakened a lot in last three minutes. Sorry. Uh, uh, what? Uh, there is some problem. Yeah. What's wrong? Zoran, what's wrong? Um, because if, if you're afraid that our Conference will stop in three minutes. That's not so. We have kind of permanent link, so it's not a problem. Okay, we continue. I I, I will stress your attention to the first part of this um, general construction. So, uh, Uh, okay, I will continue with some introduction to to this uh, to this problem, and it is the problem of uh, coloring of uh, faces of uh, hyper hypercube. Mm. So first of all, I'd like to uh, make some notations uh, uh, the good way to uh, numbering the faces of an n cube. Uh, so a sequence of signs, A one, A n, parameterize a face of an n cube. Uh, if A i uh, takes values zero, one, or star. Uh, and it means that uh, zero means that uh, this value, the is value of a vector, uh, is one uh, is zero. Uh, one means that uh, this value fixed to be one, and star means that uh, this value, uh, this uh, this component uh, goes from zero to one. So uh, uh, it means that in this uh, direction uh, we have uh, the complete interval. Uh, which is an edge, uh, one edge of a of a of a hypercube. Uh, so, for example, in the free cube, I n uh, I three uh, 
uh, one, the first direction, second, and the third direction. Uh, the vertices, uh, which are else uh, faces, but zero faces of a cube, they enumerated by uh, by solid symbols. Uh, one, zero, zero, one, 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 uh, uh, one, 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 zero. Uh, the uh, one edge here is one star zero. This edge. Because the first variable uh, is fixed to be one. The second value goes from zero to one, <clears throat> and the third uh, variable is zero. Uh, the upper two phase uh, has the following notation. Uh, the first two variables are general, so it's star star, and the third value is one. The third value takes the, uh, uh, the, the first the third uh, variable takes the value one. So uh, this is a good uh, uh, and compact uh, way to, to denote all uh, faces of all dimensions of, uh, of a hypercube. Uh, okay. Uh, we define a cubic version of simplicial uh, homology uh, so to, to do this, we define a, a differential, and to do this, we we need to define some order on 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 a border of a of a, of a face. So I like to define a sequence eta, uh, which is composed by zero and one, going. Uh, infinitely, uh, and then uh, uh, I define uh, definition. Uh, let sigma uh, be be a k face. Uh, face. A face. Uh, uh, it means that uh, in the world representing this uh, this face, uh, we have only k stars as symbols a i. So uh, it is something like this: uh, star, 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 one star, etc. So the number of stars here is k. <clears throat> All the rest are, are the solid symbols, so the uh, they are star, uh, the zeros of ones, and we define a. Uh, uh, a boundary of sigma uh, as a uh, as a set of faces um, which obtained from sigma by uh, substituting substituting a star by a symbol zero or one. So uh, uh, sigma. Uh, I sigma L in coming and sigma L outgoing <clears throat> and sigma L in coming um, means that uh, we replace uh, L 
Эльф. Стар. Бай. Это Эльф. And sigma L outgoing means that the L star is replaced by by the alternating by the inverse of eta L. So let us consider the simpler, the simplest example. Let uh, let uh, n be equal to. So we have just just the two cube. The first direction, the second direction, <clears throat> zero zero one zero one one uh, one zero. Uh, the edges, uh, the 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 two face is marked as star star. And now we can replace uh, the first star by zero, and zero is the uh, first element of atom. Uh, that's why uh, the one edge zero star <clears throat> zero star it is the, this one is an incoming edge. So this edge is incoming. Uh, the second incoming edge is zero one because we replace <clears throat> the second star uh, in the world representing the two phase by the second element of the sequence eta. So these two edges are incoming. And uh, the rest is outgoing. Okay. Okay. Now I can define the space of coloring of faces of a hypercube. Uh, uh, coloring problem. Uh, let uh, <clears throat> R be map from X uh, N small N to X N. Uh, uh, definition. Uh, C is a coloring of faces uh, n minus one of a hypercube n to the set X. So it's a map <clears throat> from the set uh, from the set of n minus one faces of a hypercube n big N to the set X. Uh, such, a, such a coloring is called admissible admissible if uh, for each sigma in f n n so if on each n phase the colors uh, of of incoming Uh, the colors of incoming uh, faces x1, x, n, and 
the colors of outgoing faces. Uh, related are related <clears throat> by the map y1 y n is r applied to the colors of the incoming uh, n minus one faces. Uh, so let uh, me uh, let me demonstrate this definition on an example. And my example will be the three cube n equal three uh, n equal two. So it means that I define the problem of coloring of edges of the three cube. Uh, uh, so uh, see is the map. See is the map here from uh, one uh, faces to to the set X, and the um, and the relation on on the on the colors on on colors uh, are applied on two faces. So let, let me draw the cube. Uh, X, Y, Z. Uh, and And let uh, this this uh, these edges be of the following type. Uh, <clears throat> uh, zero zero star uh, zero star one. And zero one one uh, star one one. So I have some problem with drawing. Uh, it's a pretty, let's say, uh, tricky. Mm -hmm. So what program are you using? Uh, it's uh, Microsoft Whiteboard. Uh -huh. Online? Or yes. Did you download? Yes. Uh, I will try. If not, uh, I, I can just reload the just reload the um, the whiteboard. So <clears throat> starting with uh, such three edges, uh, we uh we 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 could try to color all other edges of this cube so um, uh, the definition is is such that uh, the colors of such two edges could be related should be related uh x prime y prime uh x prime y prime is some map R applied to X, Y. But which should be, uh, this should be satisfied on each two phase of this three cube. So then starting uh, considering uh, the upper phase of this cube, we can apply <clears throat> an operator R to colors X prime and Z. And we can obtain colors x two prime and z prime uh, 
So the first the first one was like this. And the third one is this one, which produces coloring of uh, right uh, 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 the the uh, uh, an edge on the right uh, so to color these edges but uh, we can uh, start by another procedure by uh, we can start coloring by the by this face and we can obtain the colors for such two edges i will denote them like y tilde and z tilde when we continue but by, by the bottom face and uh, we can obtain the colorings x tilde and z two tilde and the last one is the application on the operator R on the on this side, and we can produce x to tilde and y to tilde. So <clears throat> we can state this problem, but uh, but the condition of the coherence. Uh, uh, of uh, of such uh, relations between colorings, uh, in fact, is equivalent to to some equation on on the map R. In this case, with uh, big n equal three and small n equal two, uh, the coherence condition uh, uh, of such coloring problem is exactly the yan baxter equation. So the condition that x to tilde is equal to x to prime y to tilde is equal to y to prime the prime is equivalent to the condition to the young baxter equation for the map r and the general statement uh, is the following Uh, the coloring problem has solutions if uh, R uh, satisfies an uh, a relation. On uh, on uh, an on an n plus one face, and it is sufficient. So this problem has not other C uh, uh, The coherence uh, condition for this problem is only a relation on an n plus one face, and this uh, relation takes the following form. Etc. Uh, so we have we have here n plus one mappings. Uh, and this uh, this relation examples. n equal two. It is exactly the Yan-Baxter equation. 
Mm, so what what it is written here? <clears throat> uh, R. Sorry, sorry. May I also make a small remark? Yeah. I think it's better to say that there is a solution for any set. There is a unique solution for any set of absolutely uh, initial phases, if and only if this relation holds. Because sometimes there can be some solutions which, well, in spite of the fact that no such thing holds. All right. Just if you choose some very special kind of initial conditions for which this actually holds, then it, it works. Am I, am I... Okay, I, I think you are right. <clears throat> so let's... Uh, um, <clears throat> So it, it means that this, uh, this problem of coloring is most uh, 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 has the, the biggest set of solutions in this case. One can say like this, but I probably better say that it is really, it is just uniquely determined by the set of initial data. Yes, yes, but it, it needs to define this. Uh... There is no, yeah, 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 yeah. But actually, yeah, uh, there can be some. You can put it like this, but whatever. Okay. Uh, uh, not formally, uh, this equation means that uh, the set of solutions for the coloring problem is the most possible. Do you agree, Gosha? Yeah, yeah, sure. The largest possible. Okay. Uh, uh, so, in this case, the uh, n simplex equation takes the following form uh, star star zero equal r one star star zero star uh, star star one. <clears throat> and it means that uh, uh, this map, um, uh, it is a map which is applied to uh to the to the component uh, to the component uh, first and second first and third and it is just the usual form of the n baxter equation uh, the second example is a little bit uh uh, so it's relation to the tetrahedron equation is a little bit tricky, but however, uh, let us consider the case n equal three. Uh, <clears throat> uh, it is uh, 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 so it's a tetrahedron equation, but it takes the following form: zero star 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 one. Zero. <clears throat> so, and it, uh, uh, each uh, operator uh, in this equation is an operator which acts on uh, colors uh, uh, associated with uh, two directions. So, to the, uh, with the two faces of this uh, four cube. Uh, so, we can write this uh, as R one two three R one two four r one three four r two three four so to the to this product in the inverse direction <clears throat> but uh, to make a relation with the with the definition at the beginning of my talk uh, we should uh, 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 we should use another enumeration uh, 
uh, method. So we, we can uh, we should uh, enumerate this operator by numbers of two direction in the four cube, and uh, it is done as follows. Uh, we have two directions uh, in the lexic graphic order given by the pairs of numbers. Uh, and I prefer to use this, the inverse enumeration of the two faces. Uh, and uh, for example, the um, uh, an operator R1, 1 to 3, R1 to 3 is an operator which acts on two faces of the cube one, two, three, <clears throat> but it means that it acts on uh, on two faces with numbers one, two, one, three, and two, three. And these are, uh, uh, with a face, uh, with a two direction of numbers three, five, and six. So in our uh, initial notation is phi, Phi three five six. So is it um, just a coincidence that uh, the order you have here on in this table is just the lexicographic order? Mm, I could not comment. So it's like this. <laughs> this is just if you look at it, it's just lexicographic. Yeah. Most yeah. natural ordering. <laughs> yeah, but okay. So you could you could verify that uh, the rest is. Uh, 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 produces exactly the <clears throat> the good notation in the definition of the Zmalochik of tetrahedron equation. Okay, uh, uh, what do you want? Uh, uh, how would you like to continue uh, my talk? So I defined I defined all the family of n simplex equations. Uh, I demonstrated some properties, some solutions for the uh, Zmalochikov equation. Uh, Gusha, could you say what are your preferences for? for Actually, this? it's up to you because it's your talk, so you can choose whatever you think more important. Important. Um, well, I mean, uh, all the preliminaries are done. So, what 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 options there are? Okay, if you want me to choose, then just give me the options. <laughs> I mean, there are, I think you can um, give some examples of solutions, but you have already given some. Um, you can speak about the relation with topology and the relation with probably positive matrices. So as far as, as I'm concerned, that I, I, I'm more interested in positive matrices because topology, I know about this, about topology. But yeah, it's up to you. Mm -hmm. What do you mean on the topology, Gosh? I mean, uh, two nodes, invariance of two nodes, it's actually... Oh, I mean, two, I see two nodes <laughs> are for bias, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, well, I mean, some people like okay. nodes, independently of being vice or not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, uh, are there some... Well, as far as I'm concerned, I probably would definitely prefer to, to, to hear the relation between these constructions and the positivity because topology because these two nodes uh, theory i know about this i already actually discussed this a lot earlier mm -hmm. what is more profitable for uh zorich also for zoran so zoran do you have any preferences Zorane. I agree with you. Okay, uh, positive matrices then. Then positive matrices then be okay. Okay, for positive matrices, we can return to the beginning of my talk. Mm -hmm.
Uh, okay, let let me uh, uh, give some some definitions. Uh, totally. Positive, uh, positive matrix A uh, uh, so it's a real matrix of dimension n by n is such a matrix that all its uh, all its minors a i and j are positive their a and j are just subsets uh, uh, n so just the subset uh, subsets of uh, uh, of key elements in a set of n elements. Uh, there is, there is uh, 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 there is some version of uh, the definition uh, related to up triangular matrices, a totally positive upper triangular matrix. Uh, upper triangular matrix mm, uh, is a matrix uh, those non-trivial uh, minors are positive um, such that, that I you mean non-trivial for some of for the obvious reasons of being uh... yes uh, are positive yes. if if they are not uh, uh, tautologically zero. So, for example, in our case, uh, A is one, 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 A, B, C. Uh, uh, this matrix is positive, totally positive if, if A, B, and C are positive, and A, C minus B is also positive. These are only condition for the total, total positivity of this uh, of, uh, of this matrix. And if we represent uh, our matrix in in the following way, X one 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 Y uh, one Z one one <clears throat> uh, then uh, the matrix A is totally positive positive if X, Y, and Z are positive. Uh, so it means that X, Y, and Z are uh, good parameterization of totally positive matrices. So you uh, you, uh, you know uh, probably one of the uh, one of the principal problems in the uh, theory of total positive uh, total positivity uh, 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 it is a problem of finding mm, uh, 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 of finding minimal parameterization so these minors the, these four minors are excessive so mm, it is the three dimensional manifold and uh, these minors are functionally dependent so uh, 
the theory of cluster uh, varieties appeared uh, uh, as uh, as the uh, figure of uh, such minimal uh, charts, uh, minimal uh, clusters of uh, miners, the positivity of uh, of which is sufficient to to the positivity of all miners. So, for example, in this case. <clears throat> Uh, uh, in this case, uh, uh, there are uh, there are two clusters uh, B. Uh, I will denote uh, these miners by delta B, uh, A, and delta, uh, and uh, B. C and delta. Uh, uh, if B, A, and delta are positive, then uh, then C also is positive. And here the positivity of B, C, and delta uh, shows that A is also positive. Uh, so one of the way of thinking about cluster of clusters in cluster varieties um, is the uh, uh, is about the set of such minimal uh, uh, minimal groups of uh, of miners the positivity of which uh, guarantees the positivity of all miners uh, and the variables x y and z here uh, the positivity uh, uh, guarantees the positivity of all miners due to the cauchy uh multiplication property. So uh, all all these uh, all these uh, factors are uh, totally non-negative. So so what, what again? How does cauchy binet appear here? Appear here? All, all all the uh, all the uh, all the uh, factors in this formula are totally non-negative. Uh, uh, you mean if if this is totally if everything is non-negative, if x and y and z yes. are non-negative, then the product is totally non-negative. Uh, then uh, then the product is uh, totally positive, even positive. Uh -huh. and, uh, and, and the opposite is also true. And the opposite uh, is also true. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, for for positive values of x, y, and z, the factors mm -hmm. are totally non-negative because there are some zeros on the right. Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, the, is is the opposite also true? I mean, if you take the totally positive uh, upper triangular matrix with ones on diagonal, is it true that the decomposition in x, y, and z like this? All this has it was uh, all the, on the positive x, y, and z. Traditionally, it uh, it is true uh, almost uh, almost uh, almostly on this on this space. Almost all uh, matrices, uh, totally positive matrices, have su have such uh, decomposition. I see. Okay. Mm. So it's up to some uh, some kind of the risky uh -huh. uh, set, right? Okay, and uh, so uh, these uh, variables x, y, and z are uh, positive variables uh, in a sense. So their positivity guarantees the positivity of all miners of this up triangular matrix. And there are two ways to to uh, to, to construct such such parameterization. So we can consider the product of such matrices in a, in a different order. Uh, one one z prime, one y prime, and one one x prime. <clears throat> so it's another way to introduce the positive parameterization on this uh, on this set of positive matrices, and two such parameterizations are related by solution of the tetrahedron equation. Mm. 
so in this example i, I could not say, uh, say uh, i could not say more uh, so it's uh, it's uh, it's some heuristic observation uh, but uh, it is traditional So uh, the, the electrical solution is related to the theory of electrical networks. Uh, let me say something about this. Um, uh, an electrical network. Uh, it is. Uh, it is a. It is a graph. Uh, uh, simple planner connected planner uh, <clears throat> with some function on edges R plus uh, and with some a subset of uh, boundary vertices. V boundary is a subset of uh, the set of vertices of this graph. Uh, and we consider we consider a problem. So there is a graph. Uh, with boundary notices, uh, uh, vertices, uh, for example, this, this, and this, uh, and with some uh, weights of on edges. C one two, C one three, C two three. Etc. Uh, we can uh, uh, so uh, uh, there is a problem of electrical network, uh, which means that uh, we consider some uh, electrical sources uh, with potentials a u one, u two, and u four. Uh, and uh, this defines some uh, some electrical currents on edges of this uh, of this uh, network, and in particular some currents with, which will uh, go out. One, I two, and I four. I'd like to I three, three, here four four. Uh, and the classical problem is to find find uh, the vector of currents for given uh, given vector of um, of uh, potentials. And in fact, it given in fact it given by uh, the very uh, old uh, procedure. So I is given by the response matrix of this network multiplied by U. And this response matrix, uh, this response matrix is just the sure complement of some block in, uh, in Kirchhoff matrix of this network. Uh, so let the Kirchhoff matrix K, which is minus C I J, and on the diagonal, uh, the sum of C I J for J not equal I. Uh, this Kirchhoff matrix, I'd like to represent in the block form. There, the first block correspond to the 
uh, boundary vertices. Then uh, MR is just the sure complement of the block C. So it is A minus uh like this like what i don't see the changes this is the formula um oh i see Oh, that's this. Yeah, you just explain what what is the sure complement? Okay. Yes, the sure complement of the block C. So, in a sense, it, it can be uh, can be uh, can be written like this. Uh, and uh, M R M R uh, is considered as an invariant of an electrical network. Uh, an invariant with respect to some natural transformation of a network. As an invariant of a network, with respect to the star triangle transformation. Uh, which means the following. Uh, let, let us consider a network uh, with some, some part, which is a triangle with some, uh, with some uh, conductances. Uh, in fact, it can be replaced. Resistances. Uh, oh, yeah, conductances is one over resistance. Yeah, I see that's yes. the same. Yes. It can be locally uh, uh, replaced by the star configuration with some different conductances. And uh, 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 the values are related by some transformation, T, C1, C2, C3, is equal C1 prime, C2 prime, C3 prime. Uh, this transformation is related with the, with the electrical solution for the uh, tetrahedron solution <clears throat> uh, by the following change of variables. We should introduce variables x1, which is 1 over c1, x2 equals c2, x3 equals 1 over c3, x1 prime, c1 prime, x2 prime 1 over c2 prime and x2 prime is equal c3 prime. <clears throat> After this change of variables, uh, uh, the star triangle transformation produces the electrical solution of the tetrahedron equation, which is written here, this one. Okay. Uh, in fact, in fact, this observation uh, produced what is now called the theory of 
of electrical uh, cluster varieties Uh, cluster varieties uh, and that place uh, 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 so the uh, the elustic uh, the elustic solution uh, parameter uh, which plays an important role in the parameterization of uh, of the unipotent group uh, is exchanged uh, here by the electrical solution and uh, it plays a completely analogous role in parameterization of the set of um, response matrices of electrical networks and such transformations are just the uh, just the uh, basic uh, transformations uh, between different parameterizations of uh, unipotent group uh, okay <clears throat> i'd like to stop here But uh, I, I'd like to stop here principally because this uh, this theory is the uh, subject of another another talk. But uh, I, I, I'll be I'll be very happy to answer some questions. Well, actually, um, yeah, there are lots of questions. If I, I would actually be asking them uh, one after another, if it were not for so so, so late here, it's. Uh... 1 a.m. in Beijing, sorry. But I still um, wonder um, what is the outcome? Just, uh, is there any, so, so so far I gave you a couple of examples of how uh, total positivity is related with um, posit uh, with um, solutions of the triad equation, right? Um, Right. Um, I just didn't quite understand the total positivity here in the uh, case of uh, star, tri uh, star triangle transformation. But of course, you only have uh, positive conductances and you get positive conductances again. That's that's more or less it, right? And okay, still... I suppose I have some comments about this. Mm -hmm. uh... You see, uh, for example, in uh, in the orthogonal uh, case or in the uh, unipotent uh, case. <clears throat> uh, so this problem of uh, positive minors in uh, in clusters. Uh, you see, it is algebraically strict, uh, and in the the appearance of the uh, solution of uh, the tetrahedron equation uh, always is, is always related with some uniqueness decomposition or uniqueness uh, choice of uh, representatives. So I think that the strictness of uh, 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 do, do, do I understand the the algebraic uh, uh, part of this positivity. Uh, 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 positivity condition is strict uh, and that's why uh, we have some uniqueness uh, in decompositions and that's why uh, we obtain solution for the tetrahedron equation. I uh, could not say uh, something in the inverse order so how this uh, this algebraic structure uh, resolves some problems in positive varieties but uh, but I think it exists because the uh, uh, because the uh, tetrahedron equation uh, it also represents some integrability condition. So it represents that there is no uh, high zigzags in in the problem. Uh, so you can produce uh, something starting only on this direction. For example, in the unipotent uh, group, uh, if you consider the group of, of high dimension, uh, all uh, all uh, all clusters in this uh, positive uh, variety, uh, all clusters are related by the composition of these primitive uh, transformations. Uh, which solves the tetrahedron equation. There is no other conditions between uh, between uh, different clusters in this variety. 
So I think mm. the positivity is the condition, uh, the strict condition, which guarantees some uniqueness uh, to obtain the solution to the yeah. kind of equation. It's actually it deserves a separate talk, but not today. It's already, uh -huh. yeah, it's already too late. Ten minutes past one a.m. Okay, are there any other questions from the audience? Maybe Sasha, you have some questions or Zoran. Uh, Jim, one, one, just one stupid question. You always showed us only um, examples of matrices three by three. Are there are some more sophisticated examples? Matrices? But, but you see the, uh, the tetrahedron equation is solved not by matrices, but by, by the yes, transformation yes. of parameters. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand, but nevertheless, you always uh, have examples with three parameters. I mean, are there some more sophisticated examples? I have no other examples, and uh, uh, moreover, I think that it is very natural. So this equation is called the uh, local Jan Baxter equation. So uh, in all examples, but, but, I know. Uh, which equation is local? Which one? Uh, this equation, uh, just just a moment. Uh, this condition is called the local Jan Baxter equation. Local uh, because uh, the parameters on on the right and on the left are different, but they are related by some uh, some additional functional uh, relation. You mean exactly for the three by three matrices? Yeah. Uh, no, this is not necessary. So you, what, what, what do you mean local? So if you uh, substitute instead of matrices, some R, one, two, so on, then it, it will call local. Uh, 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 I think that uh, the name lo local means uh, just that uh, uh, in different part of this equation, we have different parameters. Mm -hmm. So parameter, parameters uh, plays the local role. Mm. Uh, there is a version uh, of this equation in tensor notation. So uh, these are matrices in the tensor cube of something. Mm -hmm. And there are, uh, uh, there, are uh, uh, there is a rich family of non-commutative solutions of this local Jan Baxter equation. So in, in free algebras, for example. Uh, no, I, I mean, you just substitute instead of matrices some operators, right? Or like in Jan Baxter equations. Yes, yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. But um, I mean, for this total positivity, uh, are there some greater matrices or something like that? You can consider the unipotent uh, UN. Any, any unipotent yes, UN. Yes, yes, yes. But uh, uh, you, have, you have many decompositions. Mm -hmm. But it always um, in the product of uh, matrices like this, mm -hmm. and the relation between different uh, charts between different clusters uh, 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 are the compositions of such transformations. Mm -hmm. So in in all dimension dimensions, yes. Uh, yes. the relations are just uh, uh -huh. color of this. Uh -huh. So I suppose, the, uh, Sasha, that you have a very good question. What is the analog of uh, cluster structures uh, related with solution of four simplex equation? Yes. Yes, it's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, I understand that it is uh, as simple as a talk. Uh, but nevertheless, I just uh, have many stupid questions because I'm not an expert at all in this question. It will be great pleasure to continue it privately or uh, another time uh, okay. during the seminar with great pleasure. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. So if there are no other questions, then let us thank our speaker again. And yeah, so next time I still don't know. I still don't know our speaker, but I think well. So the next time, either the next, so this is either the last seminar this year or the next one will be the last. So we will decide this. Okay. Um, in any case, keep in touch, stay in touch. I'll send everybody the invitation. There will be some new new lecture next time.
Goodbye. Thank Goodbye. you. Goodbye. And in case we don't need just happy new year coming. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Nice to nice to hear you, Zoran. Okay. As well. Okay. Mm -hmm.